I took a screenshot for the the freaking episode thumbnail and a zombie killed me. I'm not even joking. I just I what? I'm so confused. There goes all my levels too. Thank God he drops it all. I guess the numbers just keep coming. We're at two deaths now. Went AFK for a second and a zombie slayed me. Which, it was daytime. Where did he even come from? When I died taking that screenshot, I must have not picked up the pickaxe we enchanted last episode. So I lost my levels and my pickaxe. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. I'm back at the cactus farm today, all in place after AFKing for a short time. To turn this to an XP farm, though, we're going to need to get some iron for hoppers. But I have a plan. Let's get iron manually before potentially making it automatic. Now, when I say automatic, I'm talking about an iron farm, which I'm sure many of you guys have seen before, but I don't want to just go steal someone's design, so I've been working a little bit in a creative mode to design my own coming out to these mountains with fortune is actually broke less than a day out here just randomly grabbing stuff off the side of these mountains and there's still so many mountains to go and i'm coming back with almost two and a half stacks of iron that should be good enough for now so creating an iron farm what does that entail well first off most importantly we need villagers to create our own village Second off, we need to make some sort of capsule to let them sleep and work at their workstations too. Third, we need to get a zombie or a pillager in a capsule nearby to scare them and make them produce the iron golems that we're in search of. And finally, we flush away these golems to obtain their iron and then that resets the spawn cap and the villagers can spawn more iron golems. That is a lot of work for one episode though, so we're going to focus on getting our smelter ready for the cactus farm and maybe linking up to the village just to bring some villagers over here this is where we want the water elevator to come up here and feed our auto smelter so i'm going to do exactly what i told you not to do last episode and dig straight down again but just to show you the setup down here i have one block of water here pushing all the items this way you can see the blue ice there Items will flow over onto the soul sand, and then we're going to have to block this off up here and make a water stream all the way up. I made this water line going all the way up, and it flows over, goes on top of this hopper, and then we have an auto smelter here. So now all we have to do is go down to the bottom, put some kelp down there, and then bone meal it all the way up. So the water stream is all water sources, and then the items fly up in the water elevator. Bone meal this until it can't grow anymore. Or I drown myself. Replace the soul sand. Oh. With that, we have cactus flowing in. And now we just need to set up some infinite lava over here and come check on it every once in a while, refuel it. I'm gonna make a trash can for all the green dye because all the stuff that gets smelted is. It's basically useless to me. I don't need green dye. Wait. Oh, I forgot something. Okay, now we're set up. <laughs> I placed some dripstone on each side. So we have eight cauldrons here just to constantly fill this barrel with. The cactuses, when they're smelted, they give about half an XP or per. So it starts out slow, but over time, if we just keep this running while we're doing other things, we can come back and get some insane levels from this. I dug out all this extra blocks around the outside, but I learned that it's actually a little inefficient because sometimes the cactus can pop off and land on the side. So we're going to go ahead and fill up this top layer with smooth stone to make it look good. And then the bottom layers with cobblestone because they don't really matter as much. So it was a little tedious, but I did place cobblestone on every layer just to block in the cactus more. And it should be more efficient now. And maybe we have some lava up top to start fueling this thing. Oh, not yet. They're not dripping lava just yet. There we go. We have our first bucket here ready to put in. We can start smelting. And our first die is done. Maybe by the end of the episode we can get a pull, but I, uh, I doubt it. This thing kind of does have to run for a while. I might AFK it overnight soon. We're already filling up with cactus here pretty good. 
Our XP is on the way. Me and Stevenson are out here right now. Oh my god, dude, it's so slow. It's so slow on a horse. I didn't know that this affects your mining speed. I gotta clear a path to the village because I eventually want to have a minecart line that gets sent over from a villager breeder. And then we can have like a little villager village right here full of all the trades and whatnot. Uh, same. Same little buddy, same. Spent a little bit of time starting this straight shot of a path right to the village. You can actually already see it. It's not that far. I just need to take out another, oh, who knows, 50, 60 blocks. And we'll probably put a villager breeder about halfway through. We'll make a portal to link from the villager breeder to the village. Get some villagers there. So they don't have any professions and then we're going to ship them back over here we'll just build trading halls and we'll, we'll put them in their cell trade with them until we get the trade we want speaking of trades what do you got nothing i want i guess he has two leads that's something i want i refueled the smelter here we'll just have to come in and keep refueling this over time I'm actually a little worried that this is not fast enough for one furnace. I I guess my math is wrong, but I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. We'll see if we cook through all the cactus in time. I'm going to take Stevenson over here, grab the coordinates, and then we're going to link up to this village. I wrote the coordinates in chat, and now if we divide those by 8 and go to that coordinate on the nether roof, it should just make a portal up top. Hopefully there's no cave underneath that we link into, but that tends to happen a lot in these updates. So if we go to the coordinates 1143, that's exactly where our portal should come out. All right, let's light this bad boy up and see if it works out. <laughs> I guess that works, I guess that works. We're on top of the house. And it's not too far away on our nether roof either, so we're gonna easily be able to get villagers back. To end off the episode today, we'll refuel this. And then we're going to check out how much XP we just get off of seven stacks here. And from 14, we go to 22. I mean, look at that already. It's pumping. If I AFK this overnight, we're going to be able to get XP in no time. And with that, that is where we're going to end today's episode. I thank you guys so much for watching. I know today was a little bit of a work-heavy episode. Not many builds, but we're getting stuff done. We have xp coming our way now and we're very close to having some villagers which are really going to step up the game so thank you guys again for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day bye